Hi, I'm Roger McCleary, an automation specialist with the Reynolds Company. Today, I want to talk to you about CCW, more importantly, using CCW Connected Components Workbench software to configure and start up a PowerFlex 525 drive. What we want to talk to you today about is using CCW software to do a drive startup. And to do that, you open up CCW. You can do it a couple different ways. The easy way, easiest way I have found to do it is to click the Discover button. That will actually bring up a RS Who RS Link screen. Uh, at that point, then once the screen comes up, you'll find your device that you want to connect to. In this case, it's a, a PowerFlex 525 drive. We click on our drive, and we click OK, and then it actually will bring up all the parameters of the drive. Now, if you look on the left, there is no device added to the project. So in this case, we do want to add a drive to the project. So you don't have to, but it's easiest. Click Add to Project. And now we have our drive sitting over there, and we're ready to configure our drive. And that means to do a startup on it. This is version 11 of CCW, and so things are a little different. Here we do have a device definition and all, all of our properties. Over to the left, you see address wizard and some other items. Those were across the top bar before in previous versions. In version 11, the wizard exists there. Just want to point that out because it is a little different. Click Wizard, and the one we want to select is PowerFlex 525 Startup Wizard. And then, once you know, there's a couple other ones available. We want to click that one there. It uploads a set of parameters uh, based on its startup you know, uh, parameters. The first one is a welcome screen. You see that? You're, you know you're connected to the drive and every life is good. Okay, so we want to click Next. And now, if I'm not sure of the integrity of this drive, I might want to reset the parameters. And I have three choices to reset the parameters depending on the level that I want to get this thing back to out of the, out of the box factory reset. I click Next. And the next page available to me at that point is going to be my language. Okay? Uh, at this point in time, uh, I'm pretty good with English. So I think I'm going to leave it at English. But you do have Spanish, uh, some others available. Mode of control. Out of the box, it is default to senseless vector. I recommend leaving it like that, but you could set it for volts per hertz, or you could go to vector control. Those are just some available options to you. Senseless vector works out well for you. And if you set it for volts per hertz, you do have to change those. Max voltage. If it's like a European motor, I want to set it to 200. In this case, it is a 230-volt motor, so I set it for 230. If I have an encoder feedback, I would select it here and tell it how many pulses per revolution is the encoder. Click Next. This is very important. This is your nameplate data from the motor. Literally, this comes right off the nameplate. 230 volts, 60 hertz. Mine is a very small motor, so I set it for 0.2 amps uh, overload current and 0.2 full load amps. The poles on the motor are 4. Motor RPM on this motor is 1600. This is important if I'm in uh, vector control when I go to rotate to the motor. This is very crucial that this information is correct. I can't stress enough that this information needs to match that nameplate. Click Next. Now, there again, do I have a feedback type? Kind of redundant, but uh, now I'm able to do some pulse scaling and some other things uh, on the encoder. Click Next. Do I have a dynamic braking resistor? If I do, then I need to tell the drive how big is it and what is the duty cycle. I would just simply get this from the manufacturer and select it. What do I want to have happen when I push the stop button? By default, it's ramp, coast to stop, or ramp, clear fault. I could set it for coast, DC brake. In this case, let's leave it to ramp CF. CF means clear fault. So when the stop button is pushed, that's what happens. Click next, now direction test. I can actually enter 10 hertz. And, or anything I want to, push start, and I can see if my motor is actually turning in the right direction. In this case, it is. I like it, so I push the stop button, and then I'm asked a question. Is the direction of the motor rotation correct for this application? If it is, you click yes. If it's not, you re reverse the motors, uh, reverse the motor uh, leads. So I'm, ha I'm happy with that, and so I would uh, click next. Oh, yeah, if I had an encoder connected, I would actually see the encoder pulses coming back. It's a way to check the encoder as well. Auto tune. I have static tune and rotate tune. Static tune, if I push it, it takes the parameters that I entered in that motor data and does an algorithmic calculation and does a pretty accurate job of tuning it. That's if I cannot turn the motor, I would do a static tune, okay? If I can turn the motor, I like rotate tune because rotate tune literally takes that same information and it kind of tests you. You push rotate tune, the motor will turn in a forward clockwise reverse uh, direction, and then the parameters are set best based on that. 
clicking next. Here's where I set my max forward frequency and minimum frequency. I could set that for, say, 55. Maybe I have a pump, and I, so I set my min frequency to 30 hertz. I don't want to go below 30 hertz. So there you can set it as well. And here's where I set how fast I want to accelerate and decel. I've got it at zero and zero. You don't want that, but that's how that's set. Do I want to disable my reverse operation? I would just check or uncheck that box appropriately. So those are my ramp rates and speed limit rates. Okay, we'll click next, and now we go to speed control. Where is my speed reference coming from? Right now, I have it set for the network. I could have uh, speed reference 2, speed reference 3. If I say set it for 0 to 10, I've got an error because speed reference 2 is already a 0 to 10. So it kind of pre-checks your settings as you go. But if you want that one to be 0 to 10, you could still go in there and, and scale it. My line low is 0% to 100%. That's based on 0 to 60% or 60 hertz. So I can actually scale it right there. Do I want unipolar or bipolar? I have a pot connected to this drive. It's telling me I'm at 76.8% max speed reference. So already I'm getting some analog feedback. Uh, so that tells me my pot's hooked up correctly. Oh yeah, we also tell you land the positive lead on 13 and the negative lead on 14 on the drive. So we don't only tell you uh, where to land the drive, we tell you, or the, the speed reference, we tell you what it's doing. I'm going to put it back to Ethernet IP. Let's click next. Okay, now if I do want to set up my uh, Ethernet, here's what I would set up for either boot P or parameters. If parameters, you have to give it its IP address. That's its IP address. Set the subnet mask and default gateway if necessary. I'm setting mine back to boot P. Okay. Oh, the asterisk there means there's a difference between the offline file and the online file, and those have not been accepted. It's just telling you there is a difference. I click next. Here's where I set up all my digital inputs if I want. You see Terminal 2 is not used. Terminal 1 is a stop. It's fixed. Terminal 2 is not used. I want to set it for, say, two-wire uh, forward speed, okay, or two-wire forward. There. Now I have a forward and reverse capability on my drive, and it even tells you where to land the wires. Preset frequency. It's important. You have two of them sitting right there, but it counts in binary. So by going five and six, I can count one, two, three in binary, and there are my one, two, three. I can be going five hertz, 10 hertz, or 20 hertz, whatever I want. If I need additionals, I can just configure those other inputs to be presets as well and, and keep counting up to, up to 15 presets. Once I like everything there and I, look, I, I verify that my wires are landed correctly, I click next. Relay outputs. How do I want those to close? Okay, if I'm in a ready fault condition, it'll close. Maybe I want motor running. Uh, there's a whole host of settings that I can have, as you can see, reverse. What, how do you want those to close? Once I, I like that, I click next. These are my opto outs. The first were relay outs. These are digital outs. How do I want them to behave? Okay, and so now I have my analog outputs. How do I want that to be referenced to? Typically, it's output frequency, but it could be DC bus voltage. It could be current. It could be a lot of things. Okay, so I can set that, and then also now it tells you to land it on the Terminal 16. So it's telling you where to land the wires. The next page is very important. The top half of that, those were parameters we changed when we did our startup. Because remember, we changed our motor from 0.3 amp to 0.2 amp. We changed the RPM to 1750 to 1600 RPM. This page shows you if you click finish, these are the parameters that will be changed. So be careful and make sure you know what you're doing, because once you click that finish button, you're done. Thanks for watching. For more information, visit our website or give us a call.